Hey everyone, Gary Simon of CourseCetro.com, and today we're going to tackle live reloading with the Gulp Task Runner, and also integrating and how to integrate Bootstrap, Foundation, Balma, and other CSS frameworks. So a common concern for front-end developers is setting up live browser reloading when they're making updates and they're developing their CSS slash SAS, HTML, JavaScript, and other files, but fortunately, there's a JavaScript task runner called Gulp.js, and this has been around for a while. I, it's something I've always kind of wanted to you know, cover, so I'm doing it now. And also, I'm also doing it because I've been a little bit stagnant on my content updating because I've been learning some new stuff that I will be covering very shortly. So let's get started. The first thing is... Oh, but real quick, before we begin, make sure you check out my site, CourseCetro.com, where you're going to find a bunch of courses on modern design and development. A lot are free, and the others you can access for the cost of buying me like a six-pack each month. That's it. Now, also, it probably wouldn't hurt to subscribe here on YouTube, and be sure to make sure the notifications are turned on. All right, let's get back to it prerequisites. So you're going to need Node.js installed with NPM, which simply means Node Package Manager, before proceeding. So you can check whether or not you have them installed by opening up your command line or console and typing node-v and then npm-v as well. And they should give you version numbers if you have it. If you don't, it'll say it's unrecognized and you just have to visit nodejs.org, visit the downloads page, then download the installer that's appropriate for your operating system, install it, and then reload your command line or console, and then you'll have it running. All right, so the first thing we're going to do to get started is to make a new directory. So mkdir here, and I'm just going to call it project 101. Then we're going to cd into it. All right, and then we're going to run the npm init command and this will generate a package.json file, which will store all of our project dependencies. All right, so after this, we're going to install Gulp and browser sync into our project. So the way to do that is npm install Gulp package and then browser hyphen sync. And then we want to save it as a development dependency. So we add the hyphen hyphen save hyphen dev flag right there. All right, so, you know, usually more often than not, you're going to want to utilize the power of SAS or something or some other preprocessor uh, with CSS when you're developing a project. So if you're using a framework that's built to work with SAS, such as Bootstrap, Foundation, or Balma, or if you simply want to use SAS without a framework, then you need to install another package that can compile the SAS files to CSS. So if this is the case, then you want to run the following command after the others have installed. So we run npm install gulp hyphen sass, save it as a dev dependency. And if you're using a different preprocessor, such as Stylus, for instance, simply Google the name of the preprocessor plus gulp, and chances are you're going to find a gulp specific package for compiling and handling it. All right, so next we want to consider installing a front-end CSS framework. So like I said, if you're using one of those several popular front-end frameworks, such as Bootstrap 4, Foundation 3, or 6 rather, Balma, et cetera, then now is the time to install it with the packages. Uh, so for this tutorial, we'll assume it's Bootstrap 4, though the process is pretty much the same for the other frameworks, so don't let that deter you. So npm install. And at the time of recording this, um, the latest version of Bootstrap 4, which is still in alpha, is right here. So I'm going to install that. And once that's done, I will go ahead and unpause this. All right, so I have Visual Studio Code from my editor opened up here in the Project 101 folder that we were working with. You should just have a Node Modules folder where we have uh, all the dependencies installed and then also our package.json file. So to get started, the first file we're going to create is an index.html. And I'm going to paste in some HTML just to get us started here. 
And by the way, if you want to paste that in as well, just view the written version of this tutorial at corsetra.com. The link is in the YouTube description here. And basically the only thing to really note is this line right here where we're linking a style sheet, CSS, from CSS folder forward slash main.css. And this doesn't add, it, it doesn't exist yet. We don't have to create. It's going to be generated automatically uh, a little bit down the road. Um, Next, let's go ahead and generate a SAS folder. Inside of the SAS folder, we're going to create a new file called main.scss. You can also use .sass, which is slightly different in terms of how you write uh, the CSS. And what we're going to do is just define a variable real quick. My color will just be blue. And then we'll set the body background to my color variable, which is I uh, created up top. Oops, there we go. So we'll save this. And the reason we've added this, um, you know, just some basic SAS here is to make sure that it works and it actually compiles down to regular CSS later on. So, you know, in your project, this is where you would be writing your CSS um, and inside of this folder as well with other files if necessary. So outside of here, we're going to create a new file called gulpfile.js. All right, so the very first part of this file is involves creating uh, variables that import the packages that we need and that we installed. So the first three lines here, I'm gonna increase this font size just a bit, are importing the gulp package that we installed through npm gulp hyphen sass and browser hyphen sync and browser browser sync by the way is what will allow us to um, set up browser reloading automatically all right so the next portion is going to be creating a few tasks that will handle compiling uh, the sass into css and browser reloading via browser sync so the first task that we're going to create will be gulp.task method. First argument is the name of the task. So we'll name this SAS. And inside of here, we're going to return gulp.source method. And we pass in the SAS files right here. Now this could be in the form of an array. So we can put here and then have multiple files and folders. But for now, we just have one, so we're just gonna put in a single reference, and that's going to be in the forward slash SAS folder that we created, main.scss. Now, if we had multiple SCSS or SAS files in there, in that folder, we could just say asterisk or wildcard all, like that. So I'm just gonna leave it at main.sass just for now. The next part of the statement is to reference the pipe method. So pipe, and we're gonna pass in SAS, which is defined up above in this variable. And what that does is it takes any of the source files found through here, and it will compile them down to CSS. After that, we put in another pipe, and these are just sequential steps we use gulp destination or DEST, and this is where we're going to place the compiled CSS files. So we'll put it in forward slash CSS. And then finally, a pipe for browser sync dot stream. And this will reload the browsers once those other steps have been uh, completed. All right, so next, after this, we're going to create another task to create a local server through browser sync and watch any of our SAS and HTML files. So to do this, go up that task once again, we're gonna call this serve. We're going to pass in, in the second argument, our SAS task. And here, we're gonna reference browser sync dot init or initialize and the server will be in our project root. Next, we're gonna use the gulp watch method 
and this will say we're going to watch any of the files inside the SAS folder main dot scss or this could be a wildcard dot scss again if you have multiple files and if any of them are changed or updated we're going to make it run the task up here which is referenced by its name in the first argument so it's called sas now i'm going to hit shift alt and down here in visual studio code to replicate this and this time we're also going to want to reload the browser if we make any changes to the html file so we'll say forward slash any for wildcard HTML. And then we'll remove this real quick. And we'll simply say on change browser sync dot stream or reload rather, which will reload the browser. All right. And then finally, we'll have one more line. And then this will be another task, and it's very simple. So we'll set the default task to the serve task that we created just above. And what this means is when we run gulp at the command line or console within the project folder, it will automatically call the serve task by default. And so this negates having to type gulp serve explicitly every time. All right, so let's save that. And now let's see if it actually works. Let's make sure we save any files here. All right, we'll go back to our command line. And now we just have to type gulp. All right, awesome. Looks like it worked. It, load on, it loaded up on another uh, monitor. I have three of them. And there we go. I just paused and split screen with my uh, browser right here on localhost 3000. Again, it should automatically load this for you. And then um, over here, we have our main SAS. Just to show you that it's working, we can change the value from blue to yellow. Save it. There we go. Automatically, it tells you with, with a little toast message here that it injected the file, the given file name. And that is it. So, of course, you can also extend this gulp file.js to include a lot of other packages for a lot of different purposes. So, for instance, um, if you want to create some minification to run on the main CSS folder, like for instance, if we have a, let me get up my menu over here, we can see it generated the CSS folder with the main CSS. We can see it just has our standard CSS here. Um, one thing I forgot to do was to actually reference Bootstrap, which we installed. So how do we do that? It's actually really simple. In our SAS file at the very top, come down here, or up here rather, we simply import, for Bootstrap at least, the URL is node modules, Bootstrap, which remember we installed that through NPM, and there's a SCSS SAS folder, and then a bootstrap.scss file, and we don't have to specifically reference that extension. It will add it for us automatically. So this imports it. So watch what happens when we save this. Remember, without saving it, this is what our main CSS folder looks like, or file rather. If we save it, we see automatically our, our font change there. And we can see now we have that full massive framework right there. So, you, you know, uh, if this is a serious project where speed matters, then you would definitely want to extend this gulp file right here to include, you know, different packages that will minify and reduce the size of this CSS file. But yeah, that's basically the gist of how gulp works as a task runner. And specifically in relation to automatic browser reloading, you know, again, we can go to our index.html file and just type my awesome project too. There we go. So there we go. Hopefully you, you learned a decent amount uh, if you were looking for this specifically. And yeah, check out coursetra.com. Very shortly, we're going to be having a strong emphasis on learning distributed databases and ledgers uh, and also cryptocurrency development and exciting stuff like that. All right. I'll talk to you later.